Hey, welcome to episode number 48 of the Debt-Free Dad podcast. You know, Thanksgiving, one of my favorite holidays of the year, is right around the corner. And there is no better time to talk about the topics of gratitude and contentment and how these two things are going to play a critical role in keeping you out of debt and also eventually reaching financial freedom. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt-Free Dad podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now here's your host, Debt-Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, 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 how's everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Debt-Free Dad, and we would love to connect with you on one of those social platforms. Guys, can you guys believe that Thanksgiving is next week? It's crazy. Now, we already had Thanksgiving. I know, I know. <laughs> I know we, we throw a Canadian in there and it's all messed Sorry. up now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I seriously always get this messed up. I'm always like, it's like early. Cause when was your guys' Thanksgiving? It was like second week of October, right? October like 12th or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, I always, that always throws me off. <laughs> your Christmas holiday shopping season has got to be really long. Oh, it's super long. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we overspend. Cause it just goes on and on and on. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love Thanksgiving. I, I, you know, I obviously love the food and movies that are on TV. Uh, favorite Thanksgiving movies, planes, trains, and automobiles. Have you guys, well, Ryan, I know you've seen that movie. Amber, have you seen planes, trains, and automobiles? I don't think I have. No. You ask your husband, Paul, I guarantee you he's oh, seen my planes, trains, and automobiles. Seen it. <laughs> <laughs> love that movie, but I love Thanksgiving. And, you know, I think Thanksgiving just kind of brings up what we were talking about when we introduced the show today, it's, it's this idea of being content and, and grateful. And that's what, you know, the holiday is really all about. And today what we want to talk a little bit about is how these two things really play a role in your finances. And, and they play a big role in my opinion. Um, because if you're not practicing these things regularly, it's, it's easy to fall in this cycle of hyper consumerism, uh, not being really appreciative of the things that you have and, and it's easy to fall into that. It's not like you wake up every day and say, I'm just going to be ungrateful or I'm not going to be content. But in the society that we live in, and we're going to talk about reasons why this is happening today, um, you know, it's easy to kind of fall into that cycle of, of always looking towards the next thing rather than just, you know, appreciating the stuff that you've already got. And just to talk about these two terms, and, and I'm not sharing these two terms because I don't think I don't think you know what they mean, but I think it's important just to kind of lay out what the specific meaning is. Contentment is a state of happiness and satisfaction. So satisfaction and happiness with your material possessions, with your finances, with your life, that sort of contentment. And grateful is appreciative of benefits received and obviously expressing gratitude uh, to other people as well. But as we mentioned, the reasons why I think these two things are pretty difficult, and you guys can talk about this from your perspective too, but you know, I know when I was in debt, I did not practice this stuff. I did not see kind of, I mean, I'm not saying that I wasn't unappreciative, but I wouldn't say that I like spent time actually being really grateful for the stuff that I had. I, I kind of feel like I always felt for what we have in our notes here today as we describe it as more, faster, better, and newer. And um, I always found it difficult to, to practice this because I was always concentrating on just the, the next purchase or buying the bigger house or the more expensive car or whatever it might be. What, what are your guys' thoughts on that and experience? Yeah, for me, it was the... I mean, it's very similar. It's like you never really could... I was never really content because I just never allowed myself to be content. <laughs> it was more of as soon as I got whatever I thought was going to make me content, it was always about the next thing. You know, um, it was never, there was the noise outside of my life was never quiet. It was just always like, Hey, we did this. We went and did this trip. Now what, now what, now what? And we bet, I mean, it, and we're going to talk about a lot of these things today, but that's how you're, that's how we were conditioned to think, you know, the world conditions you to think that to make you not um, be content to want more and, and spend. That's, that's how the hyper consumerism works. That's how they get you to do that. Well, and life goes by like, it's so fast. It's everything's fast paced. Everything's like it says more faster, better, newer. It's, it's always um, like for me, I'm goal oriented. So I get to a goal. I'm done. Okay, cool. Now what? Right. Like it, <laughs> you don't so, even really, you don't even really enjoy the moment, right? You're kind of no. just like, okay, I did that. Now it's now, now it's next. Right. And I still, I still catch myself doing this. Okay, cool. 
I got, I, you know, I, I, I bought this house. It's Yes. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> so you, I still catch myself being like, oh, maybe I should just slow down and be content with what's going on right now in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. It is. And, and you're so right. Like, you know, and, and the same thing with our business, you know, when I meet goals, hit goals, it's like the, the celebration point of those is, is so little because you're always going on to the next thing. It's just, I just think it's how society works. And, you know, you look at things like the marketing, marketing of products, marketing of debt, you look at advertising, you look at television, uh, you look at movies, TV shows, and I mean, all of these things. I mean, you see this everywhere. And, you know, especially when it comes to like marketing, especially this time of year during the holidays, you're going to see it. Um, like for instance, you know, Apple, they just came out with their new iPhone, iPhone 12. And, and what are those advertisements talking about? The latest and greatest features of that phone. And, you know, if you have a, a later generation iPhone, you might feel like you're inadequate. Like, oh, now your phone's not all of a sudden good enough. I need to get the next one. There's a lot of people in that whole smartphone cycle where they're constantly upgrading to the latest and greatest rather than just being satisfied and content with with the phone that they have. Uh, another one that I see regularly is uh, the card ads during the holidays, you know, and we've mentioned this on this show before, but the one that always kind of comes to mind is it's two neighbors and the one neighbor goes to the store after the holidays and gets some great deals on Christmas decorations because it's after the holidays. So he's like, I'm, I just got some great deals. He opens up his trunk. He's got all this Christmas stuff in there and he's, you know, he's talking and celebrating about the fact that he just got such a sweet deal on all this stuff. And then they pan over to the other neighbor who's got this nice, brand new, shiny vehicle in the front yard. And he's kind of looking at him. And then he looks at his vehicle and looks at him. And, and then the neighbor that has all this new Christmas stuff kind of is just like, you know, feels sorry for himself. Like, oh, I'm not, I don't have the new vehicle. So my purchases don't mean anything. So it's, it's these, I mean, as, as innocent as that commercial is, <laughs> that's the type of stuff though, that promotes, I think, not being appreciative of what you have, it promotes not necessarily spending enough time on being grateful and really content with what you have in your life. Well, even look at the, I mean, just besides the Christmas car ads, just car ads in general. I mean, when's the last time you ever seen a car ad that showed the base model car in the commercial? Right. Yeah. You know, cause you see the car in the commercial and you're like, I really like that car. I want that. And you go to the dealer and you're like, this is what I can afford. And you get the, the base model and you're like, Oh, well, I want that. I mean, that's, it's all emotion. They play There's a reason they show that on those commercials because they know when you show up, that's what you want. You're, you're not interested in the model. They didn't show you. Right. You mean you don't want the roll down windows? <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny that you bring up the roll down windows. This is kind of not even on point, but I just got to bring this up. I was looking at a truck the other day and it did not have automatic windows. My son gets in it because we took it for a quick test drive. And he's like, dad, what are these things? I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, that's what rolls down the window. He's like, I've never seen those before. <laughs> Our truck has that. <laughs> I was like, and he's 10, but you know, I mean, it's an older truck. You know, is it like an old three? I was, is an old 2003 truck I was looking at. And, you know, a lot of the new vehicles, they don't, you know, they don't come with crank windows anymore, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's interesting that you bring that up, but, um, but yeah, it, it's so right on. I mean, again, if you, if you look at marketing, you look at the information, it, it drives us to have this hyper consumerism attitude. Again, the, the newer, the greater, the faster, the shinier, the better. Um, and sometimes the more expensive, right? And and then what do they do on top of that? Oh, well, we'll give you some nice financing to help you afford that next upgrade, right? Uh, along with, obviously, just that stuff, and we talk about this one a lot, is you also, you know, you got to think about social media and, and your social circle as well. And I think it's easy to fall in the trap of comparing yourself to other people. Um, I mean, we we talk about that a ton on this show. In fact, you know, for me, that was kind of one of the hardest things to kind of break away from eventually was just getting to the mindset of not really caring what everybody else was doing with their money and, and being completely 100% comfortable with, with what we wanted in our lives and material possessions and everything. You know, it, it took us some time to get to that point because your social circle, social media, what you're seeing your friends and family do, it, it impacts you. It impacts you tremendously. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I see here, you have like seen people going on trips and vacations. I mean, pre COVID that was me. I was like, Oh my gosh, now nobody's going on trips right now. So I'm like living the dream. Cause I don't have to stress about going on a trip, but I, I, I mean, I travel all the time, so I'm grateful for all of that. And, but you see someone go on this, like, Oh, I just got back from one and now I want to go on another one Yeah, because you're seeing people doing it. And social media is just crazy for that. Especially yeah, here we, in, the, in the middle of winter, like Ryan's, oh. Ryan's down in Tennessee, almost, you know, Georgia area. So they don't get the winters like us. And, and you see people going on vacation on the beach. I, I hear you, man. I, I, it's, it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we just, I mean, we just went away for our anniversary and we went to the beach and I had had a couple people make a comment, you know, oh, I'm so jealous, you know, oh, I want to be there or, oh man, I just wish I could do that, you know, and it's just, I feel bad because that's not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it. And I'm, you know, I don't, I make, I've made a very conscious effort as we've gotten out of debt to not post that stuff on social media and to not show like, hey, here's where, where I'm going now or any of that but through conversation they had heard we were going and it's like, I, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make you feel bad that you can't go or you're not going. Um, but it's just ingrained in us. We do feel, I feel that way too. I see something and I'm like, Oh, I wish I could have that. Yep. We see it all the time. In fact, our roots members talk about this a lot. You know, this is, this is something that uh, is a hard thing to break the habit of is comparing yourself to other people, seeing what other people have, um, makes you feel bad for what you don't have. Same thing with your kids. Like if, if your friends and family, their kids are getting extra things and your kids aren't like, it's, it's so it's like full circle. I mean, it, it really does impact you. So you really have to be mindful of that. We're going to come back and talk about the benefits of being grateful and content and how this really plays a role in your overall financial health and reaching financial freedom. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, if you love planners, this is for you, but do you know why planners frustrate me though? Because they only get it half right. Now, sure. They're really fancy at helping you manage your time, which is really important, but where they get it wrong is money. Most planners don't include any financial planning. Things like keeping track of paydays, bills and due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, goal planning. And that's a real pain. Then you've got to go and create your own. And who's got time for all of that? So instead, what happens? Nothing. We ignore our finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends right now today. I am so excited to announce the release of our brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. Now, before you say, Brad... I've already got a planner. Well, this is not your ordinary day planner. This debt freedom planner is a companion tool that works with your day planner to help you save more money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. This is literally the tool that we've all been waiting for that works with your planner to help you take control of your money. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com. Click on the debt freedom planner in the menu to get all the details to order your very own debt freedom planner today. Hey guys, we are back. We are talking about the benefits of being grateful and content and how those play a role in your financial life. And uh, I'm going to kick it off this segment, at least with just a few statistics, uh, actually about a half a dozen. And hopefully this will show you just how important these things are uh, as it relates to money. Uh, first, contentment has the potential to do a few things. Number one, develop the ability to enjoy what we already have instead of being relentlessly driven by desire. We kind of talked about that in the first segment. It's going to help us find peace and happiness in our everyday life and relationships. So not just relating to your money or uh, the stuff that you have in your life, but also just your, your whole life as in, in general. Um, slow down the cycle of living faster, consuming more, and destroying the environment. And this last one I got to talk about, this one I talked to my son Noah about. He He's like a big fan of these plastic junk like little treasures. I, I were your kids ever into this? Like those, right. You remember like we were kids, you know, you go to the vending machine, you turn the little gumball thing and you get like this little plastic piece of junk. Right. <laughs> it's like, I, I tell him he's cause he's like big. He's like, you know, I, I want to, you know, pick up the, you know, my, the garbage. Like when we're out on walks, he'll pick things up, throw it in the trash. And I'm like, I was like, you have to be really mindful of consuming those things. He's like, well, why? He's like, I like them. I'm like, yeah, but how many of those have you thrown away? He's like a lot. I'm like, where do you think those end up? <laughs> he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, good point. So, I mean, it's the same thing. Like hyper consumerism, hyper consumerism does damage the environment because the more you buy, 
the more they make, right? And the more goes into the landfills and the oceans and all that kind of stuff too. And then lastly, contentment has the potential to foster and develop good patience. And we've talked about patience on this show and how that plays a role in your finances. You can kind of see how all these things are kind of intertwined. Yeah, patience, I think for me, was one of the hardest things to to hold on to. <laughs> but um, over time and just sticking to plans and stuff, it's it's really helped. And it actually helps you slow down a little bit and have that contentment. I, I mean, I, I can say when we started this and when, even before we got out of debt, contentment sounds pretty boring to me. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. And I think a lot of people listening are like, man, you guys talk about like having older cars and not nothing new. And like, you're happy. Like I'd rather be unhappy driving my new car. <laughs> like that, I mean, I, I think that's how a lot of people think. And I know I thought that for a long time, it was, I felt like, you know, I'm not going to have nothing nice in my life. Cause I'm, you know, how am I going to be content? But after we've gone through it, it is, it is weird. It is different. Um, I mean, I used to feel like my contentment was on my big house and my new cars and all these other things. And it's, it is strange how it has changed over the years since we've done it, you know, especially since we've gotten officially out of debt. Um, I just don't, now I can have those things and not worry about it. And I don't want it. It's just, if someone would have told me that, cause my whole intent of getting out of debt was so I could buy the better things. And now I don't want them. Yeah. Um, and so it's hard to explain to someone like, Hey, you're going to be super happy when this is all done. And, and I never got it until I got out of debt. And now it's like, I get it. It's just a sense of peace and happiness and not worrying about all the stuff that I used to worry about eating away at my life that you just didn't realize. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah, it is. And, and you're right. It is hard to describe, especially And if I was, if I was talking to my 25 year old something, you know, 15, 16 years ago, uh, I probably would have told myself I'm freaking crazy. (laughs) Seriously. But, but you're right. It it is. It's, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around it when you're, you're still in debt, chasing after things or making payments and stuff. But when you get out of it, you start to actually have money and you realize like how much less stress you have in your life by not focusing so much on stuff and purchases, um, it's one of the most freeing feelings of, of the whole journey, I think, personally. So let's talk about some stats, and we're going to talk about that whole idea Ryan brought up a little bit. Can you have nice things? I mean, you guys talk about this stuff. Are we still able to have nice things? Like, we're going to talk about that here just coming up. But listen to some of these statistics. Gratitude improves physical health. Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains and report feeling healthier than other people, according to a 2012 study published in Personality and Individual Difference. Gratitude improves psychological health as well. Gratitude reduces a multi, uh, multitude of toxic emotions from envy and resentment to frustration and regret. Robert Emmons, a leading gratitude researcher, has conducted multiple studies on the link between gratitude and well-being. And his research confirms that gratitude effectively increases happiness and reduces depression. So there you go. I mean, we talk, we probably, well, we don't talk, but you probably have heard before that happiness is a choice. And here's a perfect example of it is. I mean, if you choose to focus more on gratitude, if, I mean, this research is proving that that's going to provide more happiness in your life. Uh, another statistic, grateful people sleep better. Writing in a gratitude journal improves sleep according to a 2011 study published in Applied Psychology, Health, and Well-Being. My wife's really good at this. Gratitude journal, she does it every morning. She doesn't do it at night. She does it every morning. Uh, I'm very jealous of her habit of being able to do that because I can't stick with it. But uh, I know a lot of people who have kept this. Amber, you were you were talking about this. Do you want to talk about your experience? <laughs> well, they, I mean, I, I'm a technology person. I'm not a notebook person. I wouldn't keep up with that. But um, I downloaded an app that actually notified me every day to be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me to to go in there and jot something down. <laughs> right, right. Just take a moment. Just right. And I think yeah. the, I think those yeah. little reminders are great. Yeah, and you don't even need an app. I mean, you could set that up on your calendar system. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Uh, another uh, statistic says a 2014 study published in the Journal of Applied uh, Sports Psychology found that gratitude increased athletes' self esteem and uh, an essential component to optimal performance. Then lastly, gratitude increases mental strength. For years, research has shown gratitude not only reduces stress, but it may also play a major role in overcoming trauma. 
A 2006 study published in Behavior Research and Therapy found that Vietnam War veterans with higher levels of gratitude experienced lower rates of post-traumatic stress disorder. A 2003 study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that gratitude was a major contributor to resilience following the terrorist attacks in the September 11th uh, attacks. Recognizing all that you have to be thankful for, even during the worst of times, fosters resilience. So, I mean, this isn't like some, like, you know, crazy idea we just came up with. I mean, there's real research and information out there that suggests that this is going to play a significant role in in your life and in your finances if you make it a habit of just focusing on what you have, focusing on the things that you've brought into your life. So what are some tips to increase contentment and gratitude in your life? And I think one of them we just kind of mentioned, and that was uh, having some sort of a journal or some sort of a daily ritual that you can put into place where you could just focus a little bit on this and you don't have to spend hours a day on it. Literally, it could just be a few minutes a day just thinking about what are you grateful for? What are you happy to have? Uh, this is something that I do, and I put um, this little note on the bottom. Just look around you. I, I always find it fascinating. A couple things. Obviously, we're not traveling right now because of COVID. I mean, some people are still taking plane rides and stuff. I am not one of those right now. I'm not traveling. But, you know, you get on an airplane. I always find it fascinating that you can get on an airplane, and literally a couple hours later, you could be all the way on the other side of the country. Like, that is pretty awesome. Like, I am always very grateful for that experience because how cool is that? Or the fact that even like we're recording this podcast and Amber's in a completely different country <laughs> and Ryan's on the other side of the, or yeah, on the other side of the United States and we're still able to have technology and make this happen. That's pretty cool. Or I always find like food fascinating. Like we live, I live in Wisconsin, like in the middle of winter, you can get bananas and avocados and just stuff that's not even grown here. Like there's just little things like that that you can just focus on that I think makes a big difference in your life over time. I really do. I, I think the biggest thing too, is just to slow down and, and take it in. Cause if your life is so fast that sometimes we just go, go, go and through the motions, but it, even if you just slow down, you don't have to write anything down Just slow down and take in something good. Well, I think, I think over the years too, the, like our society has changed so much in the last 20 to 30 years that it's, created that it's created this feeling of like you know the idea that you actually had to drive to a video store to get a video at one point <laughs> is just so foreign to this next group of people growing up like my kids have totally grown up in an age where everything is now like it used to be amazing if you could get your package in a week and then it was a few days and now literally they're starting to you can have it the same day yep. like so it's hard to sometimes be grateful. You, you're just so accustomed to like now suddenly if I wait a day, if it was supposed to be here today and I have to get it till tomorrow, now I'm mad. Like, really? Yeah. Holy cow, we have come so far <laughs> yeah. to be so impatient and not grateful for what just, you literally ordered something. It came from California and it's going to be here tomorrow and you're mad about that. Holy cow. Yep. <laughs> it's so true. So true. Yep. And, and you're right. It's it's almost like we have become conditioned to be very spoiled in our country. And and in Canada, Canada too, although your post your post service isn't nearly as good as ours, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> well, the prices are high, but I mean Amazon gets it to me usually within a couple of days. <laughs> okay. So right. and on Saturday and Sunday too. So I'm happy with so that. So you're satisfied, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> but but you're right. I mean, seriously, it, it is. Like when I hear people complain, like right now, right. We're right before the election as we're recording this. And, you know, I mean, just you hear the complaints about everything that's happening in the country. And, yeah, is there stuff that needs to get fixed? Is there stuff that needs to get taken care of? Absolutely. But the overall majority, you know, you look at the benefits of where we live and what we get to do and the stuff that we get to have and um, the opportunities to be able to do the stuff that you want to do in your life. I mean, it's just it's just endless. It really is. And we have been conditioned, though, to be spoiled. And it's easy to overlook all the things that you really do have in your life. So let's talk about this last one. And, and Ryan, you kind of brought this up before we hit record on this podcast. I'm kind of glad you did because it is true. And Ryan, you had mentioned people might make the comment, you know, I mean, you guys are all about contentment and being grateful. Like, isn't it okay, like, to have nice things? Like, you know, Brad always talks about his older truck. And, you know, I mean, it's like, what if I want a new truck? Like, isn't that okay? Well, I mean, what would you guys say to that? 
Yeah, I think for me, um, I mean, it's something I, I'm, I mean, quite honestly, we're, this is something we're wrestling with after getting out of debt. Um, we are very content. I think what we're learning now is truly what makes you happy. And I think all the years before I was chasing after things, thinking that was what was going to make me happy because I didn't know what would make me happy. So for example, I want a truck and I, potentially depending on the certain model that comes out, if it's the kind I want, I've been saving and I might buy it. Um, but I really want it and I know, and I've been through it and I know that that's what I want where before it was like, Oh, new shiny truck I want. And you get it and you're like, Oh, I don't really like, you know, like you don't really, you're not thinking through that purchase. So I think for me, I think it's a hundred percent okay to have nice things as long as it's, you're, so for me, I, the definition that we've come up with is, are we buying it for us or are we buying it so we can see what other people think of us? And I think that's really where we've, like, I don't care what people think of me, you know, um, I don't, it just doesn't matter to me anymore. So I think that's really where we've been able to enjoy the things we have because they truly are for us where all the years, it, for me, all the years before, most of the stuff I bought was for other people's view of us. It wasn't truly something I wanted. Yeah. And I I saw a quote the other day and I'm going to get this quote completely wrong, but it was like a, it was about like the minimalist lifestyle, which I think is a fascinating way to live. Uh, I'm not minimalist, but I think they have a lot of great ideas, but it said when you're considering the purchase, consider why, consider the why behind the purchase. You know, why are you really buying it? Um, what's it going to do for your life? And I think we're big on that in roots. It's like, you know, I think you know, one of the reasons why people struggle with a lot of impulsive and wasteful spending habits is they don't really have a lot of, you know, short-term or long-term goals when it comes to their finances. So you need to just stop and ask, why am I bringing this stuff into my life? What is it helping me do? Is it helping me reach goals? Is it satisfying something that makes me happy? Or am I just consuming just to consume? You know, just taking those extra few seconds can help you prevent bringing a lot of extra stuff that you don't need into your life. To, to be straight up in it, Truthful, yeah, you can have nice things in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you just have to figure out what are the nice things that you want to have in your life. And I think too many people, like Ryan, you said, are chasing after just about everything because they don't really know what's making them happy. And before you know it, you filled your life with all this stuff and a bunch of payments and debt. And now all you have is a bunch of financial stress and you're still not happy, right? And that's that's not the direction we want you to go. Uh, Ramit Sethi has a great quote. We've shared this on this podcast before, but he says it this way. He says, spend lavishly on what you love and cut mercilessly on what you don't. And I think that's what you kind of need to figure out in your financial life. And I think this grateful and contentment stuff really plays a role into that. Like, what do you really need in your life to reach the financial goals that you have? What do you need? And then just get rid of all of the other stuff. Like I'll, I'll just use a quick example before we get to celebrations and we do some final thoughts here. But like for me, uh, cable and, and satellite TV was one when I was getting out of debt. And I've, I've been without an actual cable plan and a satellite TV plan now for almost, it's coming up on eight years. And I did the calculation of my last cable bill that I paid. And over those eight, almost eight years, I've saved well over $11,000 on not paying for TV. Because it just wasn't that important to me. Now, to you, it might be. So maybe you spend that money on that. But to me, it isn't. And I think that's where we got to get comfortable with as an individual and as a family is what are the things that we really need and want to have in our lives? And then let everybody else's opinion go away. And I think you'll find that you'll be a lot more satisfied and content in your life for sure. Hey, hey, what's this I see? I thought this was a party. Let's do All right, all right. That's all means it's time for the celebrations of the show. We're going to kick it off with Nikki McDougal. She has started Christmas shopping with the money that they have set aside each month. I love that. Sinking funds for Christmas. Awesome job. And they also paid an extra $200 on their credit card debt. That is awesome. Great job. Alyssa Camacho, I have $564 in my emergency fund. There you go. Awesome. Love it. Jessica Herbst, I have been off track for a couple months, but I am back on track. I've paid off two small credit cards and started a separate savings for Christmas. Awesome. Way to go, Jessica. Heather Whitworth paid off close to $4,000 in credit card debt. That is amazing. Great job. Jess Frazier put $3,750 towards credit card debts and debt. 
Awesome. Way to go, Jess. Congratulations to you. And congratulations to all of you who are working so hard at reaching financial freedom. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback, and it also helps us grow our show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback. And if you want to get the latest from the show, be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And if you heard that commercial for my brand new debt freedom planner during the show, head over to the realdebtfreedead.com. Click on the planner in the menu on top and order yours today. We'll see you on an upcoming episode of the show. Take care.